Rod Stewart, who bought his wife Penny a narrowboat recently for her 50th birthday. Ah. And everybody thinks that's clever, but it's not, because I bought Sean an ironing board cover I for his on, birthday. Ironing board cover? What's better than a narrowboat? You've got a narrowboat, you didn't have an ironing board cover. That's why it's... Uh, you see what I'm married to. But uh, what I don't get is, how is Penny Lancaster 50? I mean, I'm 28 and she's <laughs> she, lo she looks younger than me. Everybody looks younger than you. Why have you got a poo bag? Because everybody that has a dog has a poo bag in the pocket. <laughs> yeah, how is she 50? Anyway, I enough know. of that. Uh, welcome to Spain. If it had canals. It um, feels like Spain, it's so warm. People litter picking on towpath. Uh, <laughs> We're still in Runcorn and we're on the Runcorn arm of the Bridgewater Canal. Runcorn, it sounds like a pub, doesn't it? Yeah. Which is weird because just down at the dead end at Waterloo Bridge, there's a big Buddhist centre. Yes. And it used to be a pub called the Waterloo, but some of you might have recognised it because it was on telly called The Archer and it was the pub from two pints of lager and a packet of crisps. It certainly was. Do you remember that? I remember that programme, uh, yes. It's about a quarter, half a mile up that way, but we are at Bridgewater Motorboat Club. Not a boat club, a motorboat club. Boats that have motors. And I tell you what, we have never been made to feel so welcome. Absolutely brilliant it is here. Lovely people, and they just came out with open arms, didn't they? Literally. <laughs> go away, go away. <laughs> no, we have never felt as welcome yeah. anywhere in our boating lives as we have. Come here. on more here, they said. Yeah, and if you're visiting, the, oh. the Bridgewater, and it's a weekend, you can come and moor here and use the facilities on a yeah. weekend, it's great. Years and years ago, this place used to be one of the most respected boat yards on the whole canal system. And when it was originally built, it was a loop, and it was Victoria Dockyard, or it's also known as Sprinch Boatyard. They used to make dumb barges. We've met a few of them, haven't we, in the last two years? <laughs> <laughs> and we certainly have. If, you go, if we send a drone up, you can see the shape and you can see the little bit that's missing uh, where it would have gone all the way. And that's yeah. where the workshops were that used to launch the boats. Yes. It's good, isn't it? It is good. Uh, but it's not that anymore. Uh, it closed just after the Second World War when all the canal trade died off. Uh, and then the Motor Boat Club got it and there's just a team of volunteers and members and i tell you what they do an amazing job this place is brilliant it's the best run club i've ever seen the dry dock uh which is where you can take your boat in and do some work on it if you want to is still going that dates right back to when it was a boat yard and yesterday was the day where they do a changeover so the boats come out and some new boats go in to have work done and I've so, I'm so excited about <laughs> it. Have you ever wanted to know how they empty and fill a dry dock? Is it with a bucket? Do you want to find out? This is Ken, he's a volunteer with the club and is also part of the team who's organising the boats to come in and out of the dry dock today. He told me what the procedure is for filling and emptying the dock. The boats that's in now will be coming out. We'll open the sluice to fill the dock. Once it's level with the canal system, the gate will be lifted and put at one side. The boats then will be pulled out of the dock. The other boats will be coming into the dock then. The main sluice then will be opened. The boats will drop down onto the stocks. Before we fill the dock, the team's got to make sure that the boats that are already in there are safe and secure and ready for refloating. Once everybody's ready, the sluice gate is opened and water from the canal flows into the dock. Even though it looks like it's flooding in, it's going to take a while for it to fill up again. Inch by inch, the water level's going up and it's carefully easing the boats off the stocks and refloating them. Once the water level in the dock is equal with that of the canal, it's our turn to do some work. We've got to lift the wooden gate out of its position using this original 130-year-old crane. Right, Sean, time to look butch and get those muscles working. A bit more. A bit more. I don't want to do it too, too 
With the gate out of the way, the boats are pulled out of the dock by the team. Now the reason they pull them out using ropes rather than the boat's own engine is because the propeller disturbs the silt on the bottom of the canal and that can settle in the slot where the gate goes which prevents the gate from forming a watertight seal. Now the dock's empty, it's time for the next three boats to come in. Again, they switch their engines off before they get to the gate and the team grab the ropes and pull the boats into position. All the boats are now in the position in the dock, so we can lift the gate back into its slot and to get a good seal, once it's lined up properly, we're going to literally drop the gate back in. Right, it's time to empty the dock again. A different sluice gate is opened and the water empties out into a culvert which flows back down to the river. Now the level drops very slowly this time, inch by inch, until the boats are sat back on the stocks and that's our job done. There, you'll sleep better tonight knowing that, won't you? Like a log. I thought it were really, I thought it were really interesting. Yeah, it is. You can tell by the octave of my voice going up. <laughs> Although, did you see the house on the corner? The one that looked like the house from Psycho? I know, I've been looking for him. It really does. Honestly, when you get the light in the right way, you can, you can see mother in the window. Yeah. Uh, well, that used to be the foreman's house when it was a boatyard back in the day. Talking of the day, we've got to go today. We have, and we've loved it here. We really have. Uh, we've got to say uh, thanks to Ken and to Kath and to Pat and to Kieran and to Chris and everybody else that's made us feel welcome. And we will definitely be back. Yes. But we've got to go. We're heading east. Back the only east. way we can go at it's the moment. It's a dead end at the moment. <laughs> and we're heading east back towards Preston Brook and the junction. Uh, it's called Waters Meeting and we can either go right and go down onto the Trent and Mersey which is closed at the moment yeah. because there was a landslip back in January and it's not been cleared yet so it's like coming up to I mean, if I imagine, three months or just over three months. I about four years. Since that happened. Yeah it's 1948 <laughs> wasn't it? Feels like it. Uh, so we can't go down there yet or we could go left and go carry on up the Bridgewater yeah. towards Stockton Heath and Lim and Sale and Stratford and then on towards Manchester or up towards the Lee branch of the Leeds and Liverpool Canal or we could stay here. I think we'll stay here. <laughs> Do you ever feel like a connection with a place that you've never been before but there's just something that draws you to it? And for me Runcom is, is it and I can't work out why, I can't quite put my finger on it. But anyway, uh, back in the day there used to be four big, I can't remember the name now, four big, uh, sounds like Erroff Coronation Street. Uh, Il Brogdon. No, Red Air. Uh, ba Battenberg family. Ba no, Battenberg. <laughs> ba Battenberg, that's cake. Uh, Elsie Tanner, Elsie Tanner. Oh my God, that's old. Tanneries, there used to be four tanneries. Uh, tanneries produced leather and back in the day, nobody and nowhere in the UK produced more leather than Runcorn. Now we know why he likes it here. That's probably it, isn't leather. it actually, the leather, yeah it is. Uh, but they're all shut down now. Uh, but yeah, there was four big tanneries. They also made a lot of soap. It always reminds me of Lush. Whenever you walk past a Lush shop, does it make you cough? It so gets, strong, strong smelling it stuff. In, yeah, it, gets, it gives me acky clack. It gets in your clack, <laughs> doesn't it? <laughs> Some people call the Bridgewater England's first canal. But was it? Well, I'm not getting involved in that argument because every time I say something, we get like a hundred comments of, no, it's not. You did that wrong. You missed this. You missed this. You missed that. You forgot to mention that. So You're we're, getting blocked. <laughs> so, so we're not going there. Uh, but some people refer to it as England's first canal. It was built by the third Duke of Bridgewater. His real name was Francis Edgerton. And he built it to get coal 
from his mines up in Worsley, near Lee, down into Manchester. And then they expanded it so that boats could travel between Liverpool and Manchester. Down at the bottom of where hopefully they're going to build a new link from Waterloo Bridge to the Ship Canal is Bridgewater House. And the Duke of Bridgewater had it built for him and other people as well. And he had a massive party in there with James Brindley once. Was it a rave? I don't know if it was a rave, but they both died shortly after, so I don't know what they were serving. It was a rave. Caretaker, who's a lovely man, I was having a chat with him. He lives up on the top floor, and the rest of it's used as like mini, mini officers, like mini cheddars, <laughs> but not quite as cheesy. Uh, but do you remember Graham Wallace from last week? Yes. Uh, he was telling me that they want to turn the building into like a museum and heritage centre. In fact, he did a little piece to camera for us. Do you want to see that? Yes. No. <laughs> Back between the 17th and mid-19th century, the government had a window tax. Literally a tax on daylight and ventilation coming into your house. I know what people used to do with that. It was taxed, so a lot of people boarded the windows up. But at Bridgewater House, the Duke wanted it to look like there was loads of windows around the building. So only about half of them are real. And if you look closely, you can see that most of them are actually just painted on. That is weird. It's weird. Because when you look at it from further back, well, you can probably tell now, but at first you, you had no idea, did no, you? No, you didn't. No. It's only when you get close up that you can see. It's a bit windy when you get to Greens Bridge and you've got Norton Prior, which is a big park on our port side. It is a weird canal, isn't it? Yeah. Because it's nice and wide, it's quite deep, and I think because it's a dead end arm, it doesn't get very busy. I don't suppose it helps that the Trent and Mersey is close, so nobody's coming up the Trent and Mersey. That's right. But we spoke to quite a few people who moor on this branch, and it is always pretty quiet, so it's a nice little arm to explore in it it is i've loved it and there's not a lot of boats up here the boats that you see moving i think we've seen like half a dozen in the time that we've been here and they all belong to that club yeah they all belong to the boat clubs along the canal the towpath's in an amazing condition when you compare it to a lot of the towpaths we've seen and the whole canal just feels like it's really well looked after <laughs> yeah When we were coming down the Bridgewater towards Runcorn, I could see this massive thing up on the hill over there, and it looked like this cracking big dungeon, didn't it? It did. It was proper scary. Big castle. So I thought, I'll go and have a look and, and research it. And it's a water tower. And there's actually a pipe, you might not know this, there's a pipe that goes from a lake in Wales, and I'm gonna try and pronounce it just for sport. You know I don't do pronunciation. Cardiff. Uh, it's <laughs> it's spelled V-Y-R-N-W, why or something like that. Venwy, Vernwy. Venwy. 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 Uh, but anyway, it's in Wales, and water from there goes all the way to Runcorn and Liverpool. The pipe is 80 miles long. And wow. It's about 10 foot wide when it goes under the River Mersey. You could get a car in you there. You could drive a car through it. So anyway, this water tower, called Norton Water Tower, is 233 foot high. It was built about 130 years ago. It's called the biggest trombone relief device in the UK and I think it's like a big pressure valve but it holds about two-thirds of a million gallons of water oh wow My if only goodness. we had a bath That was 
Preston Brook Marina and I can hear and I can just see the M56 in front of us which means we're coming up to Waters Meeting, the end of this bit of the Bridgewater Canal. Yes. Now we've got a choice. If the Trent and Mersey wasn't blocked by a landslip just after the tunnel, well a few miles after the tunnel, we could go that way. We could. Or we could carry on up the Bridgewater back towards Manchester, Stretford, the Lee Branch or Manchester. Liverpool or over to Yorkshire who yeah. knows we know you'll find out next week uh, we hope you've enjoyed this episode if you have and you're not already please subscribe to the channel hit the subscribe button that's all you need to do and it's free it is free hit the thumbs up if you've enjoyed the video and click the notifications bell spitting I'm so excited <laughs> if you'd like to see more of this and YouTube will let you know every time we release a new vlog Join us by supporting the channel. There's links to Patreon and there's a join button on our YouTube homepage if you want some perks and exclusive bits and pieces. And we're getting very close to the junction. And we can't tell you which way we're going. So we're going to sign off. Till next week, take care of yourselves. Bye bye. Ta -ra. Tell you what, I've forgotten already and we haven't even started yet. So just... Shut up! <laughs> Three, two, uh. oh! <laughs> With a muriel on the wall. No, I can't, oh. I can't remember. All right, uh. recognize again. That little glow I get when you press the subscribe button, it's similar to that, but it, it goes right up and it gusses it. Oh. For donkey's years, not donkey leather, just donkey's years. Ah, oh, why can't I get this right? First piece of camera. And take, he can't do it. Take 86. Uh, People will say, no, it wasn't. You missed this. You yeah, pronounced this wrong. It's not that. spelt like that. You You're wearing this. the wrong clothes. Yeah. I remember. Manchester Ship Canal. Manchester Ship, Manchester Ship Canal. And the Ship Canal that they're hoping to reinstate. I do remember. You heard somebody scream then, did you? Really? If you read. If, 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 uh, 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 oh, I'm going down below. Uh, it's called. I forgot. Pickled onion flavour, not beef. Uh, just, what? Well, you on the toilet is like a big trombone re pressure relief device, isn't it? Less said about that, the better. Just over there, and it looked like a massive dungeon. My phone's ringing. Now his phone's ringing. Hello? <coughs> and so I thought, well, I could go and get, 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 get. I just want to drink my coffee and I can't.